So, what is SAST? Well, it stands for Static Application Security Testing, and it's a pretty boring name for something that's really quite cool. In this video series, we go through cybersecurity tools. We try and understand what they do, what are their strengths and weaknesses, where do they fit in the development process, and what do they actually look like? My name is Mackenzie Jackson, and you're listening to Tool Time by Aikido Security. So what does static application security testing actually do? Well, it looks at your source code statically and tries to identify whether or not there's insecure coding methods that could lead to a vulnerability. SAST has been around for a very long time, and what makes it quite cool and powerful is that it's one of the earliest tools that you can fit in your development lifecycle. So if we think about the process, you know, you're writing something locally on your machine, it goes into a staging environment, then it goes to a remote repository, then it goes through your CI CD pipeline, then it goes into maybe a staging environment and then production environment. So this is kind of like the process. Now, generally in security, it's best to try and find vulnerabilities as early as possible. Trust me, it's a whole bunch cheaper to find them when you're writing them on your local environment than it is when you've got something in production and it's a real old crap moment. SAS can be at the very start of this, which makes it really powerful. Where it kind of fails is it has very limited context. SAS is great at finding coding issues that may lead to injection, may lead to authentication or authorization issues, cryptographic issues, these types of things that can be really present in your code. What it's really bad at finding is things like business logic flaws. It's bad at finding uh, runtime vulnerabilities, maybe vulnerabilities in your dependencies, all of these types of things. And that's because it doesn't have a lot of context. It's more or less looking at your code line by line as you write it. Now, there's a bit of nuance to that that we will get to. So how does a SAS tool actually find uh, a vulnerability? Well, typically, they are rule-based. Now, that means that there are a whole bunch of rules that if your code meets these rules, it will lead to an alert. We have the tools that stick to this rule-based kind of detection approach where you have rules and it's analyzing it. And you have some that are going more down an AI detection path. Now, I really want to make a distinction of AI detection. The first thing that you may think of when you do this is why couldn't you just copy and paste your code into ChatGPT and then get it to identify vulnerabilities within it? Well, AI isn't actually that good at detecting the vulnerabilities. It's fantastic at lots of other things that we are going to get to, don't you worry. But in the actual detection, it's actually not that good. And there's a couple of reasons for that. AI is overly keen to please, so it's going to find a whole bunch of vulnerabilities that aren't actually there. It uses a huge amount of computational power. So when you're actually trying to identify static issues in code, if you're using an AI model to do this, you're mowing your lawn with a Ferrari. So the computational cost there is kind of huge performance costs as well, but also the results actually aren't that good. When it comes to static code, we genuinely know what the patterns are that makes it vulnerable. So we can actually get pretty good coverage on it. Now, we will get to where LLMs and AI models play a hugely important role just in a minute. But for the now, I want to stick to this rule-based idea. So the first tool that I want to get into is a tool called OpenGrep. It's a fork of another tool called SemGrep. Uh, but essentially, this is an open source static application security testing tool. And why I want to show you this is it breaks up the parts of these SaaS tools really well. So in OpenGrep, you have your engine. This is what's actually doing the physical scanning, right? But the engine is useless unless it has rules. Now, the rules in this case are actually separate. But this is kind of cool because we can actually see the rules. So let's open up my IDE here. And we have some code. And uh, in this code, you've noticed that I have a security vulnerability here. Now, that's because I have a plug in in my IDE. Yeah, we'll get to that later. But right now, I have here a very typical SQL injection vulnerability. And if you've been coding for a while, you'll notice that that is because I'm taking untrusted data, user input data, and I'm using it directly in an SQL query, uh, which obviously could be manipulated. I'm not using a period statement or parameterization. So 
we have a rule that's picked this up. We can actually see that rule here. So if we look through, these are the rules that we, we have, and we can see that this rule called tainted SQL string kind of gives us this exact pattern that we're looking for in here. Now, we extrapolate this over to thousands and thousands of rules, and that's how we can get really good coverage in this use case. These rules can be very specific. They can be a little bit broad. So they don't all need to kind of meet this exact match criteria, but you're getting the idea. The other reason why I wanted to use OpenGrep is because it has a really nifty thing called OpenGrep Playground. And this is actually quite powerful. Here, you can write your own rules. So I'm going to paste my code in here, and we can write a rule that's going to try and identify the issue that we have. Now, I know we already have a rule for this, but just for argument's sake, let's say we didn't. We can write one here ourselves, and then run it and see if it actually performs as expected. Does it catch what is we want it to catch. This is cool because with SAS, sometimes you have a need for a very specific rule that may not be kind of like necessary for the rest of the world to have. Maybe very specific to your project and we can create those ourselves. If you do create cool rules, please share them with the community and share them in the open source uh, repository open grep rules. So typically that's kind of like, let's say the powerhouse of SAS tools. SAS have had a pretty bad name in the past 10 years, especially kind of leading up to the last five years. And that is because they've been a huge source of false positive. And this can all be related to SAS's limited context. It doesn't have context in the runtime. It doesn't have context to how all your files interact and how data is traveling through your project. So just this means that when you create all these rules, they tend to be pretty kind of restrictive so that when you run it, you get a whole bunch of these alerts. But when you investigate them, a lot of them aren't what we'd call reachable in production. So you can think about it is that these this kind of powerhouse is casting out a huge net. In this case, you're fishing and you pull in a whole bunch of stuff. And yes, you pull in some fish. In this case, the fish are the vulnerable code, but you also pull in garbage and other things and just rubbish, right? So in this case, you have to sort through all of that just to get left with your fish. Well, in walks AI, and this is really driving the next revolution of SAS tools. The first way is using it is to kind of provide more context in what we call AI auto triage. And that is the triage part is kind of, as I was describing before, how you have to remove all of the junk from your net and you have different fish. Well, you also have different sizes of fish. So the auto triage is basically looking at this and then giving you how severe each one is based on your context. And that's because an AI model can have the context of your whole project, how it all works, some runtime context and everything like that. And then it can be fed all of these results from your SAST engine and it can actually identify what's going to be reachable, what's going to be the highest priority, what's actually affecting production environments versus staging environments and all of these things. And this has been hugely beneficial in the area of SAS and actually help us narrow down what we need to deal with first. As an example, here is the same code. And we can see here that we have a very high potential uh, impact and we can see the summary of auto triage of why it's actually done that. You'll also notice there's something else down here, which is the call tree. And this is actually looking at kind of where our function comes in. I'm just going to expand this so I can see all of it. Looks a bit crazy. But we have here, this is where the kind of the function comes in. If we look at this, it brings us to our code. Yeah, this is what we have. And all the rest of it is actually where that function is being used throughout our project. So it understands the tree of how all this puts together and helps us kind of prioritize this. This is all powered by AI, and it's really useful in helping us prioritize what we need to do. And this has really led a massive resurgence of people wanting to use SAS to get, because trust me, for a while there, ain't nobody wanted to deal with SAS. Another area that AI is really good in SAS is what we call auto fixing. And this is essentially exactly what it seems like. It's suggesting code fixes for you. So I'm going to go back to my IDE and not only has it kind of given me this, this alert here, it's actually given me code to fix it. And we can also see that in, in kind of the dashboard here. And this is really useful. So you can see how this AI is really interacting with AI models in a very positive way that isn't just getting it to try and scan your code, which from a performance perspective is kind of like 
very intense. But that doesn't mean to say that this won't change in the future. So do all SaaS tools have these kind of AI features? Well, uh, no. In this case, I'm the, the AI kind of cool stuff obviously comes from Aikido. Now, I work for Aikido, so it's important to know that obviously I'm going to be biased when it comes to commercial or like paid tools. But what sits behind Aikido is actually OpenGrep, that open source tool that we're doing. That's actually doing the scanning. And then the next layer on top is kind of what the AI fancy things is is kind of doing. There's other tools that also layer this. So what I always suggest is let's start with open source tools and understand kind of what you're finding in your projects. If and when that becomes kind of difficult, then you can add in these different commercial tools that kind of give you additional context as a particularly well in large organizations. And there's various tools out there to kind of choose from. Let's talk now about where SAS fits into your development environment. So we talked about it here and you've already seen it a couple of times is that a SAS actually fits in very early. So you can put it in your IDE if there's an IDE plugin with your SAS tool that you choose and it will kind of catch things as you're coding. Now, obviously this is great because it means that it doesn't kind of go to the next stage. Security team doesn't need to be involved. It doesn't create an issue in production or staging, all of these kind of different areas. So that's obviously really powerful, but you also, it's very important to have SAST in your actual remote repository. Uh, and that is because this acts as your central source of truth. Uh, this is kind of what's going out into production. So perhaps something was missed, perhaps a kind of ID you didn't have it configured properly, all, all these kind of things. This is the central source of truth and you need to have that. Once it hits that, then more people are going to be involved because more people will get an alert about it, but it's still not in production. Typically, how you would implement SAST in this is kind of either with a tool that plugs directly into your like repository or your GitHub repository, for example, or a tool that runs in your CI CD pipeline. So you can do that. So you can configure OpenGrep, for example, to run every time uh, a new build comes into your pipeline. So there we have it. That's what a SAST tool actually does. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, because I'm going to be doing a new tool review every single week. We have about 20 to get through. It's going to be a while. So I'm really enjoying to sit down with it. We're going to kind of take deep dives into all of them. So until next time, stay safe and stay secure.